Good afternoon. Um, gosh, a lot going on at the moment. Well, um, kind of getting my head around working again. I mean, I'm always working in some way, but working in the sense of running an online program starting next week. Um, I've got very used to having all the days to myself to do what I wish. And I still will have to a large extent because that program will be um, just about an, a 60 minutes to 90 minutes per day. And um, it's just been lovely, the time I've had to connect with people and some of that connecting, which seems to be a characteristic, I notice like through Zoom meetings, people connecting. That's with people they just haven't had that frequency of connection with before. And I've had lots of lovely Zoom meetings. Um, and now with an easing of the lockdown, we're able here in France to meet in person, keeping social distance. And I have had uh, Zoom meetings with uh, John and Jane, who many of you know, because they uh, host, they run a beautiful chambre d'hote called Poyac. Uh, many, many of you have stayed there and you know what a delightful place it is. And Hugh, um, who uh, well, does many things, runs the local Bracont in the village, but came to India this year for the first time. And I, I'm pretty sure absolutely loved it and loved the, your hospitality in India and your generosity. And it's delightful to bring people there and for them to experience that. And Hugh's also... Um, been an exemplar on programs that I have run here in France um, so it's been there for people to model and so we've been meeting on Zoom and then oh, was it last week for the first time we were able to meet in person which was an absolute treat and um, and bring snacks to have with the aperitif um, and really delightful. And so um, that was at my home, that was here. And then this week, um, Hugh invited us to have our evening. It's just an hour. After all time in France is an hour. <laughs> it's just the kind of the etiquette of it. Uh, you don't hang around for the whole night drinking. You, <laughs> um, you come, early like so we start at six and typically leave at seven I think we left we did leave later last night um, but it was before eight o'clock and he has a beautiful view he lives around the corner from me so around the corner means up a little country lane along another little country lane but his property and his land backs onto my land pretty well um, we've often thought of setting off firework at the same time just so we could see the distance between us because you can't actually see each other because there's trees in the way however he has this magnificent view of and there's lots of um, meadow with wild flowers in it orchids and like like big daisies like marguerites I'm not sure what they're called and we were sat there last night having fantastic snacks and wine and watching the birds fly over as John's and Jane are quite an expert, well, they're all expert on birds and just the, the, listening to the calls of the birds and the um, and spotting the different ones. So we saw uh, a kite, uh, we had blackbirds, we saw pigeons, there were starlings. Um, what else? Anyway, it was just, uh, it was absolutely delightful. And it was very interesting um, sitting there looking out over that view because it was a different perspective. So we could see the farmer sowing seeds in the field. Now I see that same farmer from my home and it's a different perspective because I'm kind of at the same level. Hugh's property is higher up than mine. So he has a, a more distant view, uh, a wider view, a higher view. And uh, so it was interesting to watch the farmer almost from above and when I walked back home which was just beautiful yesterday evening to walk back watching um, 
there was on the other side of the roads another farm an organic farm where they were watering uh, the veg and it was so peaceful and warm um i just just like drank it in basically and so it was interesting seeing the farmer and that land from the perspective of Hugh's house and it was quite different I could see different things about the way the farmer worked than I can see from my own home and that's the thing about it's a whole concept in one of the techniques in NLP known as perceptual positions and the principle is that the more different perspectives we can take on a situation the more understanding and choice we have um, and so in a way and we often use the positions of our own perspective being in our own shoes and then being able to put ourselves in another person's shoes so if you have an issue with somebody for example being able to put yourself in their shoes and to experience yourself as they are experiencing you can be really enlightening and often people have mismatching perspectives there which can which will cause an issue i've had a lot of questions from um so there's a lady uh who was on my programs in india anita and she's got a series online called slay it with anita and she's been doing um recordings with ramesh who many of you have met um with me and she's done some recordings with me and she's been going through my book um, and sharing that with her audience and then some of the questions that come back to her she's been relaying to me and we've recorded answers to those and it's very interesting that a very popular misconception is that to put yourself in another person's shoes means you're going to let them be the way they are that you're going to do everything their way that's not it the aim of putting yourself in another person's shoes and getting their perspective is to kind of understand where they're coming from not so that you necessarily totally accommodate that but so that you understand you get the sense of this other side of the situation and then to be able to step back and take a third position which is kind of what i it seemed like was at hugh's place last night was to have this third perspective where you can see everything that's going on i mean you couldn't see everything that's going on but the idea of third position the technique is to be able to um see yourself as, a, as if you're an outsider and not just see but see and hear and see and hear the other person and what's going on between them so that you're kind of this detached Kind of fly on the wall and in that position to identify what's the learning that's available to you now that's another thing that gets misunderstood in this technique people think that it's there's got to be an intention you have to assume or you have to believe that there's a positive intention in the other person's mind towards you you don't have to assume that at all um, the assumption which is a very very empowering one is to believe that every situation that we encounter and particularly those that challenge us that we may feel tested by negative about in some way actually they offer a learning it's the universe if you like that is has the positive intention for us and that unless we take that learning that that kind of situation is going to keep happening different people different content but the same kind of scenario so these are very important subtleties about these processes i found the same with some of the questions people asked through anita about rapport that they said well isn't rapport a waste of time or they'd been in rapport with somebody and then the person just said well get to the point you know and so my assumption from that was that what they thought was rapport was chatting about the weather, you know, doing a bit of social, this, that. It's not. Um, it might be with people who like that. But if you've got somebody who wants to get to the point, rapport is going to be getting to the point. You get to the point. So it's about finding the way of communicating that connects you, whatever that might be. 
So it's interesting, there are, people can kind of know these techniques sort of, but not really get these subtleties sometimes about them. And it's the subtleties that make the difference. So um, yes, I was thinking about the perceptual positions as I, as I walked back and, and just found it delightful to have had the opportunity to have that very new perspective on a very familiar piece of land, an area that I know from my perspective very well. Um, and then to come back and re-experience it from my own shoes, having had that uh, overview uh, and such a delightful overview, um, like rural France with beautiful food and wine and good company. I couldn't wish for more really. Well, I could wish for seeing my grandkids, that's for sure. Um, but in terms of a setting, this is idyllic. So I hope that you are able to enjoy and value the situations that you're in and take learning from them, whatever, whatever is happening. Uh, all we have is now. And um, yeah, it's like whatever is happening now, uh, we can we can learn from that and find a way to, I'm trying to think of the words, given all the different circumstances that people are in, we can find ways to enrich these moments. Okay, question to you <laughs> is what's another perspective that you could take on a situation that perhaps you find, it doesn't only have to be for challenging situations, but on the situation that you're in, what would be another perspective that you can take and can you take it? Can you fully step into, it might be somebody else's way of thinking about a situation. And to do that means to fully step in to what it's like to be that other person, whether they're alive or dead, in order to get their perspective on what's happening. 